All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Cowboy Trades here. So it's been a few days. What on earth is going on with this Bitcoin fake out? We're going to talk about the price action, price targets, my previous Bitcoin trade, the news and the meltdown that is happening in the stock market right now. Just a quick message before we do jump into the video. As you can probably tell right now, I am very sick. I know a bunch of you have given me some nice messages and wishes over on Twitter. I really do appreciate all of you that have messaged me. But yeah, if I sound like a frog that's being strangled to death, that is exactly how I feel right now but nonetheless we move let's dive right into the news so starting off with another update from our buddy Do Kwon now we've been updating you through this entire Luna fiasco and finally the man is now wanted in 195 different countries for alleged violation of capital markets law not long after the news hit Do Kwon transferred 3,350 13 Bitcoin worth a whopping 69 million. I normally make TA predictions, but I feel fairly confident that Do Kwon is going to prison. Wrapping up the news on a few quick notes, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell says there's a real need to better regulate cryptocurrency. And Celsius Network CEO Alex Mashinsky has finally resigned. I said this months ago, but if you've got any funds in Celsius, you're not going to get them back. I hate to bring bad news, but this is just the cold hard facts. Now let's dive into the TA, starting off with my Bitcoin trade that I mentioned in the past couple of updates. Let's talk about it. Well, from these three levels, we were shorting. Uh, what has actually happened is we were shorting from 19,540. We were shorting from 19,350. We were shorting from 19,250. When I updated you on these, we were all the way down here. And I let you know for this trade, for this trade, and for this trade, that I was using a trailing stop loss in a 10% profit. This was roundabout here for all of these collectively. And as you can see, we pumped back up to these and one by one by one, we took out all three of these trades. So all three of these trades, they got stopped out in a 10% profit each. So congratulations if you did manage to get in this trade. This trade is still in the profit. We're currently trading at 19,150. But like I said, I would be getting stopped out at 10% profit for all of these. So collectively, we walked away with 30% profit. I'm currently not in a trade, but I'm looking out for the next Bitcoin trade right now i don't think uh your odds are in your favor if you are shorting right now i'm a very bearish bear but nonetheless i'm not a late bear that's one thing i'm not i'm not a late bear i will be shorting the next breakdown i would not be shorting at support that we've not broken down from come on let's use our brain guys so the next time we do break down from the support floor i will be giving you an update with my next short but for right now i'm on the sidelines and i'm watching this level play out on the four hourly time frame today, you can actually see Bitcoin broke bullish on the EMA ribbons for like four hours. The next four hourly candle came in and boom, we got classed all the way back down. And now we flip bearish again. If we go over to the daily time frames, what you can see is this is another clear reversion to the mean. Every single time we revert back to the mean, we revert to these EMA ribbons, we revert to them from a lower level. Uh, a couple of times ago, we reverted to this at 25,000. A couple of weeks ago, we reverted at 23,000. Today, we pumped up to just about 20,500. Not too impressive if you ask me. I think this is gonna start toppling over and rolling back down very quickly. Moving on to the higher time frames for Bitcoin, it is looking pretty rough. And right now, it looks like we've got another Failed move equals a fast move in the opposite direction. Ladies and gentlemen, veterans of the channel have known that I've talked about these many, many times. Every time I talk about these, we normally have these huge, huge capitulations. Now, uh, what you can see is if we draw this trend line uh, a couple of weeks ago, well, around about the 14th of August, we broke above this. We tried to have a break up. This was a failed move. What happens after a failed move? Well, you have a fast move in the opposite direction. We moved down 27% after failing a breakout of this trend line. Uh, let's zoom in again. You can see only a couple of weeks ago, 13th, 15th of September or so, we broke out, we tried to break out, we came back for that retest, we failed the retest. What is this? This is another failed move equals a fast move in the opposite direction. This time we broke down about 20%. Now, as of right now, we've broken above the top of this trend line again, we've broken above the top of this triangle pattern, and we've only come down about 6.5%. So uh, as of the time of recording this, we're really just getting smushed and converged in the higher timeframes while we are in this triangle. Uh, the 3rd of October, 
foot is where the apex of this is. And once again, if we pull up the EMA ribbons, you can see these are really starting to come down and tighten very quickly. So I honestly think we're going to absolutely explode to new lows. When do I think we're going to make new lows? Stick around to the end of the video. You can also see if we do pull up our VPVR, what did we do with this pump? Well, we pumped right up to where the volume was. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is where people wanted to sell. This is where the largest amount of liquidity was. We pumped right up to it. People got to sell. And this is why as soon as we came into the volume profiles, we immediately got shot back down uh, because people were looking to offload at these levels. Now, if we do manage to have a slight pull back to the upside in the next couple of hours when I am recording, I've got my eyes on around about 19,250, 19,300. This is the next area on the volume profiles. Uh, am I really interested in calling for $200 moves to the upside? Absolutely not. I'm getting ready to call for the next major move back down to the downside. So what are my price targets, my friends? Surprise, surprise. If you're a veteran of the channel, once again, Short-term price target is unchanged, 17,300. This is your bearish pennant breakdown. And after we do make new lows and go down to 17,300, yes, we can have a little bit of a bounce. Um, but in the higher time frames, 15,800 is really what I'm targeting right now. Let's move on to the stock market segment. So on this channel, we previously looked at the correlation between the iShares TIP ETF and the NDQ NASDAQ. We highlighted that for the past four weeks, the Treasury Inflationary Protected Securities on the top of the screen over here were making new lows, and this was likely to choreograph into other stock market indices. It looks like we were right because three days ago, the Dow Jones made new lows, choreographing for... Dun dun dun, the S&P 500 to make new lows, which it did today. If we're looking at this SPX fractal from 2008, this is exactly what we've been predicting. Honestly, like I said about a week ago, I'm going to sound like MM Crypto all the way down because we've been calling for these exact moves. We've even given you exact price targets on specific dates and we're coming down to them now. We're about 13 days away from my new lows on the stock market predictions, uh, but we're already breaking to the downside of this. I think in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a brutal landslide to the downside. Something like this will play play out and then yes of course we're probably gonna have a bounce for the next couple of weeks i hate to say it, i wish we could just be straight down forever uh, but nonetheless you know the markets do not move straight up straight down they move up down up down they move in waves and it looks like if you're going to be bearish be bearish for the next few weeks i do think a bounce is probably going to come for about a month or so uh, but right now new lows are the only thing that i really really think you need to take away from this so ladies and gentlemen the dxy is making 20 year highs almost every day the VIX is absolutely exploding up to new highs and it is beautifully, once again, following another one of these 2008 fractals that we've been looking at. US government bonds are back to 2010 levels. They're absolutely exploding to the upside. So why on earth is Bitcoin not making new lows? Well, my friends, we're waiting for one thing and one thing only. We're waiting for the Nasdaq to make new lows. The past few days, I've been seeing people say Bitcoin's diverging from the stock market. And it drives me crazy. The stock market is a huge environment filled with countless stocks, thousands of indices, and almost $100 trillion invested. Bitcoin is not following this broad spectrum of money, my friends. I've mentioned this many, many times on this channel. Bitcoin is highly correlated to the tech stocks. This is why I've got my eyes on the NASDAQ. There is absolutely nothing, nothing left in the way of Bitcoin making new lows other than the NASDAQ also not making new lows. Like I said, when you look at the SPX, the Dow Jones, these are all coming down into new lows. But tech stocks, tech stocks are holding up strong. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but Bitcoin is highly correlated to tech stocks. These charts look exactly the same. So, you know my price targets, you know what I think is going to happen next. I'm now going to finish the video off on something different. One final takeaway which should hopefully give you some insight into my mindset when I navigate these markets. Now, some of you may not know this about me, but I'm a trainee in Kenjutsu, Kendo, Iaido, and Iaijutsu. If you haven't heard of these before, these are the main katana-based martial arts in Japan. Here's me in my Kendo armor. But what has this got to do with my mindset? I want to read you a passage from a book called The Five Rings, written by Miyamoto Miyasashi, the world's most famous samurai from the 15th century. Miyamoto said, When your opponent is hurrying recklessly, you must act contrarily and keep calm. You must not be influenced by the opponent. Train diligently to obtain this spirit. 
Now, while this book was written intended for future samurai to learn the way of the sword, it also teaches about the correct mindset in which to enter a war, and I commented on how this is relevant today. Whether you're rushing into a battle or rushing into a trade, the outcome will be the same. You must have strategy, training, spirit, and composure, or else risk losing it all. Now, this quote reminds me of all the times retail traders FOMO, they used their emotions, they panicked in the battlefield, they laughed at us, and while these people were religiously slaughtered, we observed, we remained calm, we made a plan, and I presented you with this battle plan on YouTube on how we could win the war. Ladies and gentlemen, this battle plan is unchanged. I am still of the opinion that... Bitcoin makes new lows before the 10th of October. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. You now know my battle plans before the new lows that I think will take place before October the 10th. But like I said, there wasn't too much to update in terms of the news today. But uh, with Bitcoin having this fake out, with some of the stock market indices coming down and making new lows, regardless of my health, a update was definitely needed. So I'm going to be sitting on the sidelines for the next day or so, just resting and recovering. I will update you if I see anything major. But for right now, my friends, that's all I've got for you today. Cowboy out. Peace.